Okay, we're back on our 41 motor, stroker 45. So I gotta take the crank apart and cut the flywheels now. So we're done with our mock-up. We had it rotating before, so it actually rotates around. So we've got that much working on it. So now I get to take it all back apart and work on the main bearing part of it. More specifically, the main thrust washers, which are not functional right now. Couple bolts in here because it's only mock up. We kept going back and forth what we're doing. Didn't have to beat out with a hammer that time. I'll have to beat this one out of the hammer though. It's on there. Tight. Left one off. So here's our setup we're using. So there's our thrust washer in here, our thrust bearing. And this rubs right on the case right here directly. To the heat treated case race. So we're running heat treated metal on heat treated metal. So the problem we have right now is we don't have heat treated metal in the flywheel. We have one side that's cracked. This washer can be worked on also. Okay, this washer here, what it does, it centers up the bearing right there. It keeps it concentric to the crank so it doesn't go in an orbit like this. If it goes like this, it won't last very long. It'll eat itself to pieces real short. You want the bearing to rotate on, on, on center, not go overly. Okay, now this is the factory thrust washers in here, which we are not using because they're soft. This is hardened. I mean, you know, these are hard. This is hard. This needs to be hard or it doesn't live. So that's how we got to cut the flywheel wheel out for the bigger washer. Let the washer go. Washers. Hardened washers. To go in here, so we have to cut the flywheel out to make room for it. See, that's a little bit bigger than the old one there, so we have to cut that out. So, that's what we're going to do next. So, we're going to get the washer out of here, too. Obviously, it doesn't want to fall out. You can find the small street when you want it. So only got assembly oil holding that in there. All right, so there's the factory thrust washer. These are too thick because we have no inflate in the crank. This is a 72 or 78 thou, depending on which one it was. And the thrust washer we're going to use is going to be, I'm going to cut it for 16 thick washers and see how much inflate we get. Hopefully come up with some inflate. If not, then we'll grind these down to a custom size. These only come in 30 thou increments on the, on the low one. So you have a 30 second. Uh, 16th, and then it goes 16th increments, so it goes up and um, no, it goes 3 to second. It's got a 30 30 second, which is 90 thou, 
and an eighth inch. Yeah, every 30 seconds I make a wash. Man. But that's not the one we want to use. There, I'll get it figured out. Eventually. Okay, so now I take the right case off. One of these early motors, you don't need no special tools to take the crank out. There are advantages old system stuff. The disadvantage is it doesn't take any, it doesn't have any tolerance for thrust load. That's the negative about it. Okay, we're missing a bearing. can't see it, it must be over there in the hole. Because I know I had all four, all of them in there. Jeez. 11 o'clock, the interruptions? Jeez. Hello. Mm, I don't know what's the problem. Alright, late hour help. Alright, we're back to work. Oh, uh, no way's doing. All right, we're gonna cut this for flower wheel washers. So we're gonna redo this. So now I gotta take this crank apart so that I can work on it. SS nuts so they're bigger than Dal Carly nut. A lot bigger than 45 nut. Flat hammer that's nice and flat. And if you hit it flat against the flywheel, there's no damage, it pops it. Same on the crank, you hit it flat and you don't hurt it. Hit it at an angle, you destroy it. Okay. Key doesn't want to come out. all together so I'm going to try to keep it together. I just have these little holding things here that I keep handy just in case. Of course they're not made for 45s or, or Sparsters are made for big twins so a little on the short side but looks like I can get about one and a half turns per nut. That's all we need. All right, that holds it together so we don't lose it. It also keeps it clean, too. All right, put that over there. And now we got to take these ones apart. Now we're back down to stock 45 nuts, which are really dinky and frail. And you can't torque. A little smaller on that one. Let's see which size we're going to be down to. Bigger than that one. For some reason, my nuts are all mixed up over right here in my sockets. Must be this one. That'd be the one. Is it 15? Yep, 15, 16. socket. Knew I had it somewhere. Confusing me. What's this one? Big 
question. Okay, Craftsman, I can tell you anything. One inch. Stupid ass one inch sockets aren't marked. At least not very well. Okay, that's why they're like that. I don't use them enough to remember how I got them stacked up over there. Okay, same thing, flat hammer, hit it. Falls out. Key is still in the flywheel, wheel, so we gotta get that out. Keys out. Put all the parts over here so you don't lose them. Got a good catch tray right over here. Got a key didn't want to fall out. Two bare flywheels. Oh boy. We're going to work now. Didn't take long to get them apart. Don't hit it. Going over here. All right. Let's see, that must be the other mock up motor. Yep, there's my mock up motor. That one has a Timken bearing in it. I don't have to worry about all this crap. I ain't using it. I'm just going to worry about putting a Timken bearing in the case. It's not made for it. It doesn't fit very well. Back up here. How come we got that blown up so much? There we go. Alright, so. Basically, we have a nice custom cutter over here I made. Right here. Real thin. It's made to get into the flywheel real tight. Here and I got to get in between the dowel pin right here and this and cut right here. So I had to make the cutter real thin right here to clear that dowel pin. So you'll see when I get it over there what that looks like. So I'm already got my chuck set up because I just got done doing a set. We did Mike's flywheels and we're on Bill's flywheels. See another difference? They're marked. Oh, they're not to the same thing, but they are balanced differently, so we can't mix them up. It used to be best if we didn't mix them up. Okay, that seats it all the way against some chuck jaws, lead, dead blow hammer. Check to make sure the flywheel's square. So I'm going to indicate the top of the flywheel in here. Let's see how close this one is. This one way out. Wonderful. The flywheel's out too. Put a shim here between the uh, flywheel and the chuck jaws. Here it is. It's a thou and a half thick. Let's see if they're uh, not pushed in all the way. Appears to be no gap. Okay, so that part is good. Everything else sucks. Okay. That makes any difference. I doubt if it will. Okay, 
good again. See if it makes any difference at all. Doubtful. What a shocker. It didn't make any difference at all. Still bouncing around. This isn't supposed to be moving. Quiet though. And it looks like it's got a little bit of a wobble right here going like that. That can be an illusion, but it looks to me like it's moving around. Which means it's a piece of crap. Okay, well before I move everything out and change my setup, I'm going to go ahead and put the other flywheel in it and see if it uh, centers up. The other two flywheels center up nicely. It's always possible we got a, a junk flywheel. American made parts are only so good, you know. this time. Alright, is it going to move or it's going to be good? Let's find out. It's junk. Alright, so the two fly was a machine equally crappy. I don't know why. Alright, so now this has four set screws, it's on a floating chuck, which means the chuck has a bigger hold than the big dowel it's on. So these four screws, this one here, this one, that one, and this one control the movement. You tighten two screws up, you go side to side, and the other two go up and down. You tighten these two, it goes at an angle. So by adjusting those tighter and looser, you can go ahead and get this to be almost zero. The thing is you have to have it tight enough it doesn't fall off. Pretty much gonna make them all pretty tight. Some are just a little bit tighter than the other. All right, so we're gonna have to go over here and work on that a little bit. Let's see how long that takes to do. All right. That's what this is for. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna check to make sure everything else is good. Our setup is now destroyed. We'll have to make a new setup. Okay, I'll get this out of the way. Let's go down and find out what's going on with the face here. There's our thin spot right there. See if it's moving side to side at all, or is it an illusion? No, it's moving. So I don't know if you can see over there, we got a couple thou of uh, movement on it. Watch the dial move. Okay, so high is this way. So when it goes high, we need to beat this this way. Four. 
we went too far. Yep, we're back to where we started now. that's in the flywheel. If you look at it. And right there drops a bunch right here on this jaw. It goes right back up right here. So this much this goes from high to low. Then it goes back to low again. So my chuck is not doing this. That's low, high, Back low. So in this 90 degree span, it goes high and low. So that's built into the flywheel. The flywheel is now flat. You kind of see that how it does it. See how it jiggles for about three quarters and then jump, jump. The needle's not going like this. It goes like this and it goes right back. Again. Just because you see clean metal does not mean it's square, straight, flat, or anything else. This one obviously is not. Okay, so the next problem is now we got to get it get a concentric to chuck. I want to cut this on center, assuming this is what's cut on center to begin with, which we have no idea. But we're going to say the outside of the diameter must be square, but I'm assuming a lot. But you don't have much luck trying to dial in tapers; are hard to do. Okay, so. Now we're going to do this. We'll probably have to do all this again on the next flywheel. Okay, fun, fun. Okay, so high goes up on a needle. I usually go backwards when I do this. Okay, so number four jaw is the one that's high. So. Now, if you tighten this up here, it actually makes it worse because you're tightening against the round piece on the bottom, so it makes it go up higher like that. So that makes it gets worse. The more you tighten it, the worse it gets. So actually, what you have to do is you have to loosen it a little bit. And it's tight. It's still tight, even though I loosened it. Okay, that's four. You see how most of it came out? So once it dropped down, it went from five down to one and a half. And we're still tight on four. Then I go over to number whatever this is over 180 across and tighten up just a little bit. See if that takes care of it. That didn't seem to help us one bit. I think it made it worse. Where our new high is. We're still high on four. It's a little easier now than it used to. Okay, so low is now. The high is now on five. Sucker. A little more. You get pretty good now. Remember we are wearing number two this time. Ah, that's tight. It looks like we're on number four this time. Now we're going around in a circle. Chasing our tail. Just a little torque on that one. Back on four. It's kind of loose too. Barely move it. Now we went to two. Yeah, that was pretty damn tight. And somewhere around four or two. Uh, yeah, we're in 
two and two and four. Oh, two is getting pretty tight now also. Okay. Yeah, we're bounced up and down about three, four tenths. You can keep playing this all day if you want. Ah, oh, that thing's tight. There. Okay, now we're only a couple tenths now. I think we'll leave it there. Now, what to do on our face dimension? That's what we don't know. There's nothing to keep the chuck from actually moving out. All right. Put a little indicator load on it. Oops, it's going uphill. That'd look better if I got it flatter. We're going to go off the flywheel. Let's see what we got this time. No, we're just twitching. I don't know if you can see that or not. I'm going to load up a little bit. There you go. Twitch, 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 twitch. That's the flywheels out around here. You know, not flat. All right. It actually helped it out a little bit. Before it was kind of go up a little bit. Now it just goes back and forth just like that. It's just twitch, twitch, twitch. Okay, so we got this pretty square now. Going by the uh, rim of the flywheel. Hopefully the taper is on center. We have no way of knowing that. Because I don't feel like trying to dial in a taper. The problem with dialing a taper is you're doing two different things at once. You don't know which way it's moving. You really need to have three indicators on it to tell. Now we can see what you're doing each time you move something. Kind of a pain in the butt. Okay, so now I get to go back and reset everything else up. So, let's see where we're at here. It doesn't look like this moved. I figured that was my problem from before. I'm going to put it on zero this time. Gravity will drop this weight down and change your clearance in your lathe. Disadvantage of putting a nice big long handle you can turn. It's heavy. Okay. Any care in here? Okay, it hits from about that area there. Okay, so I just lightly bump that in until it hit. Okay, now we're going to back it out a couple foul. Uh, you see where the dowel pin is right there. We are clear. Do our rotation to make sure we clear everything. Appears to be clear. Crank her up. Now when you look at the flywheel right here, it's not doing this, it's not doing that. It looks square. That's what we wanted. Okay, now we're going to go in until we hear it hit. And you'll see it on the dial. Right there. It's on zero. But it's uneven, you can hear it. So I'm going to give it an extra thou. Okay, now we just start cutting inside the flywheel. Right now we're on zero. We're on one and then. Crank this thing over to two. I'm going to go all the way to twelve. Move now. Speed it out. Make sure you don't bottom out that indicator. If you bottom the indicator out, it slides it and your number goes away. Don't do that. Okay. About this way. This set up a lot quicker than the first one I did because I got practice. Always helps when you just got done doing something else. Okay, we're at 2018, 219, so we need 30 thou more, roughly. Problem is my indicator is not working very good, so I don't trust it. I don't have room to put an indicator on here either, so. 
Okay, so there's our zero. It should be 12 where we left off at. Or we're turn off. It looks like we're turn off. Go around. Nope. Where are we? Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think it's a full turn off. Yeah, we'll find out. We haven't hit anything yet. Okay, it hits at zero. We'll go that way. Okay, let's see what we got. So spin it over there. Okay, first thing I do is remove it in this way. Zero. Okay, then we move this one out until we hear it hit. hit on 12. There you go, hit on 12. Okay, we needed what, uh, 30 thou, right? That should be 24. Okay, so now we're on 11. I'll put it on 11 so I don't forget. Putting American dollars to use. Che che cheapest thumb screw you ever gets a penny. <laughs> and they work good too. So no matter what this lathe is worth, it's always going to be worth two cents because there's two pennies on it. Can't go wrong. It's an investment in the future. Okay. So I was forgetting we need about six thou left, and it looks like I got about six thou to go. Forty-four and a half. It was actually accurate for once. Hard to believe. I bet you it won't hold that number. But we'll see. There's a seven. Not hitting. There's the pen. One under. This should hit on the 11. Just before it actually. Didn't hit. Hit just after. Okay, so each line's two, we need six. As soon as you rely on this thing to be accurate, it isn't. Just a piece of crap Taiwan lathe, so <laughs> you never trust it. You always gotta double, triple check everything. Ooh, look at that. Right on the money. 205 and 5 tenths. 250 and a half. Right where I wanted it. Perfect. Get pretty good at this, huh? Okay, time for a deburr job. See if you know if you know how crappy your equipment is and you compensate, you can get good work out of it. But you have to figure out how to do that. First. See, I like my clutch lever over there. I control the speed so I don't have to hurt myself. I don't like those on-off lathes. They suck. I like having control. Try taking off your bike by jamming it in gear and see how good that works for you. Probably have issues. Okay. Where's our washer? Okay, here's our test piece. This is 2048. It's not the biggest one I got, and the biggest one I got is 250, and I'm not. But this one here is one we might actually use. So we want this to go into the groove there. It's hard to do the tapered pins over here. It works easier for me to do it this way. Okay, so this one is. 
Kind of not want to go in now. It's definitely a little tighter than the last one. That half a thou must make a difference. It went in, but it's, it's not much clearance, that's for damn sure. You can tell you only got a thou or so you're working with. Okay, so this flyway here is done. So now, are we going to be able to do the second one without having to redo everything? Doubtful. But we'll see. You never know. That's why you try to make it repeatable setups where you can. If there's any accuracy in anything. Number four for tonight. Okay, light tension on it. Rub it back and forth. Make sure there's no chips on it. Push evenly in. A little torque on it. A couple love taps. Not hitting it real hard, just a little bit. Let the lead weight do the work. Not you beating on it by your force. Okay, let's see if this thing is halfway around. Oh, we did that other one last. And I don't want to do that one. Come up here. Oh, that looks pretty close. Shockingly. Okay, move her dial. Nope, I was wrong. It did move. Nope, there it goes. It settled down. Okay, looks like that one's one foul out. I can live in one foul. But I see wobble in it. I see it going like this. Alright. So one plane's good, one plane's bad. As we break the setup again. Okay, let's see what we got this way. We know it moves, we just don't know how much. Okay, let's see if you can see that or not. Find out. Oh yeah. And look how quickly it goes back, real slow, and boom. Maybe turn a chuck even up. Okay, so out is that way. So this needs to go out. Go in right here. Okay. Can't go in no more. We have to go out. This is low, that's high. 90 degrees apart. Hard to correct that. Look at that. Yeah, that's it. 
when you look at it, it kind of stabilizes about like that and goes boom, boom. There's your low, there's your high right next to it, back in the middle. So you got high, I mean low, high, middle. We went 90 degrees, we went a whole turn, half a turn, we didn't move one tenth. That's our middle, and we got low high again right there. So the flywheel is warped or bent or twisted or it's got a low spot in here. There's nothing I can fix, just the way the flywheel is made. So, anyway, we set it up as close as we can. We gotta live with the rest. Can't fix crap. It is what it is. Okay, now we gotta take a look, see how far out around it looks by spinning it. It's pretty even again. That's what we wanna see. See, I saw three thou going like that, I didn't like it. That's how close my eyes are. A lot closer than that, I can see a thou. <clears throat> You'd be surprised you can see if you pay attention. Okay, reset everything again. That's three resets on four flywheels. So the first set repeated nicely, Mike said. Bill sets jump. I'll make sure I'll tell Bill his flywheels suck. He'll be happy. I'll probably watch the video anyway. Okay, we hit right there. <clears throat> What's going on here? Things not, not stabilizing like it's supposed to. Taking that at one pass. Totally different. time screw up. Not fixing that. I believed it's dialed too much. Told you I shouldn't do that. We're at 58 and a half, not 50. So it's eight and a half, eight thou loose. That's screwed up. So this flywheel washer we will have to lock tight in. 
to make sure it stays where it belongs. You can also see it's got a little there. I can also peen it lightly to kind of tighten it up, which I might do. If you peen it a little bit on the edge, it'll squish it in a little bit and it'll tighten up the washer. I'll probably do that too. Because I don't want the washer being too loose. It will be pinned so it won't rotate, so it can be off a little bit, I guess. It won't really hurt it too bad, but I don't like that. That's a big time screw up, in my opinion. I trusted the dial on that last one too close, too much. I left myself five, and I should have left myself ten, I guess. Oh well. Check and make sure everything is correct on my indicator. Hit zeros. Yep, same screwed up number, 57. Hey, jump. Oh, Junko. Washer fits in nice and loose. What a shocker. Alright. Maybe I can blame it on me being tired. I'm not though. Is it tomorrow yet? Oh, it's almost tomorrow. Yeah, see. Five more minutes will be tomorrow. End of a crappy day, how's that? Okay, this first one we did. See, if it pops in there. Doesn't quite want to go in there. It's real close. It was right on the money. This one over here. The last one we just did. See how it just drops right in there? See how it's got clearance on it? See the clearance? See the clearance, 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 clearance. This one over here. You almost have to push it in there a little bit. This one's a little bit underside of anything. It measured good, but it seems to be tight. And the washer's out around. Anyway, it's right in there. There's no no extra clearance on that, see it's tight. So that's how it's supposed to be. Not that way. I work to tighter tolerances than seven thousands. I work to one thou clearance, preferably half a thou. Alright, so bad, good. Which one's which? Left flywheel's the bad one. Remember that, left flywheel sucks. So after the water blows up, we'll see how that makes any difference. Doubt it well, but oh well. Okay, so this all looks pretty good other than that. In case you wonder who made the flywheels. Them guys. Alright, so next thing is we gotta figure out where the center point is for this dowel. And I gotta put a wash, I gotta put a hole in this flywheel washer so that it will fit down over the pin. It'll also be anti-rotation, so it won't rotate, so it really doesn't matter if it is out around because it won't matter. But I like it tighter. I also have to make sure this dowel pin is not taller than whatever thickness washer we wind up using. Because if that sticks up through the washer, the roller bearing, when it goes around, will hit it and it'll destroy the roller bearing. So we gotta make sure that we we'll probably wind up cutting that washer down or that dowel a little bit. Because it looks like it sticks up at least a sixteenth, and the, this washer here is a forty-eight, I think is what this one was. So anyway, I don't know what I'm gonna wind up with. I'm initially going to put 16th washers in here and see what happens. Alright, so anyway, this is what we got right now. Got a few other modifications i got to work on yet. Obviously making the washers one of them. Let's see, here's what our bearing looks like. This is an INA bearing. This is a Torrington bearing. 
which is also Timken and Koyo. They keep buying each other out. So this is the INA bearing here. See, INA. Junko. These were Torrington. Went down those INA again. See, Torrington used to be green. Temkin bought out Torrington and Koyo bought out Temkin. There you go. Nothing's the same as it used to be. Anyway, so this bearing here is just made a little differently. It's got this centerpiece that raises up to kind of hold the rollers in place. So technically these have less drag on them. So they probably have a higher rotational speed before there's a damage, theoretically. This one here has more support. So the roller cannot twist side to side like that. So it stays more true. So this one should have a higher rotational speed, but it has more drag on the roller, so it'll probably be lower. Your call. I don't like it with the bearings unsupported. It can it can twist around like that relative to rotation, cause a problem. So I like this design better. I'm sure they're both just as they work just as well, I bet. But when the crap hits the fan, I'll take that one over this one for actually beating on it. The thing is we shouldn't be beating on it because I got a nice 360 degree surface to be hitting against on all surfaces, so we shouldn't have a problem. But anyway, that's what I think of it. What, what do I know though? I don't know nothing. Okay, so that goes right in there like that. Once I get the washer with a pin in it, obviously. And then the, like I said, the case race will push up against it, so we'll, we'll pretend this is a case race like that. And that's our roller bearing right there, see? It works nice and freely. Our little washer here. This is this controls this bearing here. It keeps it on center. Keeps it from wobbling around. It's got to be on center to work correctly. The washer does not give any support side to side. So only this race. This race is supposed to be recessing in here and going around the flywheel there. On on this set here, that does not go down because I mean, on Bill's set, I'm not Bill's, on Mike's set, it's a little bit bigger in diameter, I guess, because this one's actually trying to go over it. When I made these, I made them a little bit too small, They're about a couple thou small. Looks like on this one, it's probably only about a thou small. On the other set, it was two thou small. But see, that's trying to go over it, but not quite. Now, I'm gonna have to put a little notch in that also, which is actually good because that'll keep it from rotating. Because what I was going to do, I was going to put a little bit of Loctite on it to try to hold it in the center so it, won't, so it can't move. But if it's pinned, it should be alright. So anyway, this will go, so the washer goes into the flywheel, loose, just pinned. The, this here goes on there and hopefully we'll lock it or it's going to be pins for rotation. And then I might put a little a Loctite to keep it so it doesn't move. I make it out of some hardened material. This is actually hardened a little bit. Not full hard, but a little hard. And that will center the bearing. The problem is I have to individually make each one of these, depending on what the thrust is, the washer thickness, because this has to be below the surface or it gets in the way of that. Actually, I think it sits inside of the, yeah, it sits inside of this case race. But the problem is the bearing race the bearings are flush with it, so this cannot stick inside of that. So I have to make this so that it, it sticks up almost as high as the bearing, but not quite. The bearing has a little bit of a radius on it. That's where we're going to be living on the height. It's got to be in the center to support this thing. And as you change the washer thickness here, that will change this thickness of this piece. So I have to have an individual one of these made for each different thickness of washer. So I need to make a stack of these things. The problem is this took me over an hour to make two of these, each one, and I still got to remake them because they don't fit, but. so I might not even be able to use these two on either side of the flywheels, but I think I will be because it's it's going to be pretty thin, so this should be, I might have to trim it a little bit, I'm not sure if I can trim it, but, but anyway, I have to design it to be that way, now originally I designed it to where it would go around the bearing cage here, it would actually recess around it on the back side where the roller is. Let me roll this around like that. You see it actually goes over the cage there. Not the rollers, but the cage. So it can actually stick up into the into it a little bit. If the rollers are facing outward and not inward. 
So on the left side, I always have them facing out uh, toward the flywheel usually, but I might have to reverse that. On the this bearing here, oops, and this one here, which I just screwed up. Back up a little bit. Can't back up. This one here doesn't matter which way you go, and you get a little bit of an area to live on. So this actually fits on either one. So originally I was going to use this as a centering device on bearing if I had to. But I was shooting for being tight on this. And then it would have only a few thou, like five thousand clearance to here at most, which it has clearance on there. It's moving if you can see it. So that was my original intention. That way I could have it stick up a little bit above the height of my bearing, which gave me a little bit of fuzz factor and then the height by maybe 10 thou, so I wouldn't have to make one for every 5 thou, I can do it in 10 thou increments or maybe 15 increments. I got about 30 thou actually to work above the roller here where I can have a fudge factor, but yeah, I'm trying to limit how many these I have to make. It's going to be a pain making these things. I tried to get these custom made, but nobody seems to want to make them for me, so I wind up having to hand it, make these uh, by hand each one I do. I like the idea of doing these all in my 45 motors. All my early pan and motors and 45 motors, I like doing stuff like this. These roller bearings make the early motors just as good as a late motor. No more bearing, no more thrust washer eating, which is these things. See how these things get chewed up? This one's actually really in good condition. They get really bad. See how this one's more chewed up on this side? Because there's no thrust wash, there's no thrust bearing, it's only a washer, metal on metal rubbing. That's when it takes up thrust. When you, guys put, <clears throat> when you guys put belt drives on these motors, it induces a thrust because the belt always wants to go to the high spot of the pulley, which is usually toward the outside edge. Well, if the belt's going this way, the pulley's, I mean, the flywheel's going that way. That's how, how things work. Newton's law. So, until Newton's law gets broken, you have to do it that way. So, when you do that, that puts a side load on this washer, which burns it up. And then I'm dumbass that we're putting 2050 motor oil in our knuckleheads and wonder why the things would take a crap in about 500 miles. There you go. When I put these things in there, I have no, zero problems with thrusting with belt drives with old motors, even with thin ass oil. So, anyway, that's why we're doing it. But uh, anyway, that's what we're going to do. We'll work on this next weekend again. Yeah. That's it for tonight. It's now tomorrow. There you go. We're in tomorrow now. <clears throat> we're Sunday. Sunday's my day. I'm going to work on my race bike. I'm going to have some fun at some point this year. Okay, that's it for this for tonight.